Hi there, this is Keith and we are going to do a little video to walk through some of the settings in Informant 5. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the settings. So the settings are located by clicking on the View Selector button, the View Picker, and then the top left corner you've got the Settings button. And we're just going to walk through some of the settings here. We're going to start at the top. We'll start with General Settings. And I'm just going to describe a little bit about what each of these do. So the application badge, that's the little number that shows up on the Informant 5 icon. Uh, it can show you a number of different things from today's date. That's the one I personally prefer to the number of tasks that are due, all sorts of different options here. They're pretty self-explanatory. All right, Meeting Organizer. This is when you create an appointment, who the appointment uh, organizer is and you will select this from your list of contacts. For various reasons the app is not allowed to collect your personal identif identity so you need to select a contact card there. Enable printing. If you select this option right here you will see a print icon that is displayed uh, in some of the views, some of the calendar views specifically. If you want to use a passcode to access informant you would find that here. Uh, touch ID to access informant as well. Smart title uh, has to do with uh, the autocomplete in certain fields that is available. Capitalized words is a little setting that will put titles in proper case. And text expander is tied to an integration with the text expander app. If you've never tried that, it's a great little app that lets you type in short codes and it will extend that into longer phrases. Great app to check out. So that takes us through general settings. We're going to go into color and appearance now. This is where you would switch to dark theme. Customize event task displays. Let's go into that option. So what you'll see here, this represents the different labels that can show up on the events, on the task, and on the notes. So if you uh, click on various different options here, you'll notice that I'm tapping on location and that will show or, or hide, that would mean when you're showing your events whether the location is going to show or not show on the event cell. Same thing for tasks. If I want the project name or the context to not show, I could hide that. The little green dot over there has to do with multi-select. If you don't want multi-select to show and you don't want date to select, you'll see I'm just tapping on those items and I can have those hide. I personally like to have all those things on, so I'm going to leave them on. When a note is displayed, if you want the project that the note is associated with, you could leave that visible or you could hide that. So that's the customize event task display. All right, we're back up a level here. We're going to go into colors now. There's a lot of stuff here. So for anybody who's missing the themes from Informant 4 to Informant 5, this is where you can really customize the colors of the app. So if you want to change your work hours, you can do that here. If you want to change the weekend headers or the weekday background or the weekend background or the month header, all that stuff, this is all pretty self-explanatory here. Year view colors, so on the year view calendar, which color you want your odd or your even years to view. On your tasks, if you don't like your over two tasks to be red and you want them to be yellow or pink or green, you can go ahead and change those colors as well. If you want a special color for unsynced tasks, you can do that as well. And if you want to have your tasks uh, associated with a color based on the priority, you could set those colors here as well. And then the color for unsynced notes can also be chosen there as well. All right, font sizes. If anybody is having trouble with the font size on the device or in any particular area inside the app, you can come in here and you can change the font sizes. Uh, in various different areas from, from tiny all the way through extra large. So if you have any questions about font sizes, this is where you're going to want to go. Number of lines. This has to do with how many lines things are going to wrap to. Uh, if you do like I have done occasionally and you get in and you start playing with your colors and you realize that you've created just a really bad <laughs> color palette, you can hit the reset appearance button here and it will take all your color selections back to the default colors. Okay, next up we're going to run through the view settings. On the view settings, you'll see some of the different options here. We're going to go into weather. So this is where you've got a number of different settings associated with your weather. 
If you want the automatic selection for the weather, you can just leave it on automatic. If you want to choose your weather location based on a certain zip code, you can type it in there. If you want to switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius for your weather reports, you could do that here. And then the rest of these are different locations where you want weather to show. So if you do not want weather to show anywhere in the app, you would just go ahead and turn each of these off. I like to see weather, so I'm going to leave those on. All right, next up is the Informant Today view. On the Informant Today view, you have options to turn on or turn off uh, some various different pieces of that view. So this is where you would turn on or off each of those different areas. This Enable Views. Now this is a new feature that was recently added for 5.03. And these are this area here represents basically each of the each of the buttons that show up when you click the main view picker navigation button. So if you want to turn off any of those, let's say you don't like to use the notes in Informant or you don't like to use the contacts, you can just turn those buttons off. Let's say you don't want to look at all of those different calendar views, you only like the month view and maybe the, uh, the day view, you can turn off those views. And so those views would be hidden. All right, calendar view. We've got a lot of options and a lot of settings in here. Uh, event conflict checker. This just gives you a little warning if you're trying to double book yourself at a particular time. ISO week numbers. There's 52 weeks in a year. If you want to know that you are on week 7 when you're on week 7 or week 48 when you're on week 48, you would check the button here for ISO week numbers. If you want to set your work hours, uh, the color coding will, will show you if you're in or out of your work hours based on the selections that you've chosen here. Alarms, you can configure your sound for your alarm. If you want your alarms to repeat every minute, you would check that. If you want your default calendar alarms to be on, you would do that here. If you want to a, change your default duration, if you want your default appointment duration to be 30 minutes instead of one hour, you can change that setting here. If you want your default tag, let's say every time you create an appointment, you want a certain tag to be added, you would set your default tag right here. Do you want to change the first day of the week? You could change the day of the week right here. So if you want your first day of the week to be Saturday instead of Sunday, you could make that choice here. Next, do you want your tasks to show in the calendar view? So for agenda, day, week, or month, if you do not want your tasks to show in the calendar view, you would turn them off right here. Types of tasks to show. So not only are we giving you a choice of whether to show the tasks or not, we're letting you choose which tasks to show. Do you want to show due and overdue or just your in-progress tasks? Okay, view specific settings. Do you want to show empty days, yes or no? If you choose to show the empty days and you had no appointments, that empty day would show. In the day view, how many is the maximum number of all day events that you want to show? If you want to limit that, you would choose a smaller number. In your day view, do you want one or do you want seven columns in your day view? If you choose seven, your day view starts to look a lot more like a weekday view. Okay, on your week setup, do you want a standard seven day, do you want a seven day split, or do you want week, uh, weekdays only? In your week orientation, so when you're looking at the week view, do you want to scroll from left to right to change weeks or do you want to scroll from top to bottom? Scroll month by week or by month. So as you're going through the calendar month view, do you want to, the by week would give you a little more fine-tuned scrolling, by month would just let you choose, you know, go one month at a time. Color event priority, so this has to do more with color coding options on the, uh, on the appointments themselves. Do you want the text style to be based on the text or on the background? How do you want future months to display? Lighter lines, dashed lines, shaded days. Past appointment styles, do you want them to be faded, small text, or italics? Do you want the times to be on the right or on the left? Show tentative meeting status. All right, so that is a lot of settings in calendar views. Definitely can keep yourself entertained there for a while. All right, let's go into the task view. So this is where you could switch between the standard GTD or getting things done methodology, the Franklin Covey methodology, or simple tasks. 
default alarms on tasks. Uh, your editor features. Okay, this is a great one. This is one that I like quite a bit. So when you go in to edit a task, if you want to change the order that the fields show up in, let's say you want priorities to be closer to the top, you can drag and drop these items around. Let's say you're not concerned about tags or contacts, you can turn those off and those will be hidden from the editor. So the, these settings have to do with the task editor. All right, do you want default start dates on your tasks? Do you want a default priority on your tasks? You could set it here. Do you want your tasks to be associated with a default project? If you're using if you're using the GTD methodology, you might want to put things into the inbox. Default project type, parallel, sequential, or single action and default tags. Do you want any particular tag to be set for set by default on your tasks? And your role color display, do you want it to dis to change the color of the text or change the color of the background? And do you want future tasks to be dimmed or do you want them to be in the regular color? Okay, that's the task view. Notes view on the notes tab badge. Notes today, voice notes or both. And what is your default sync account for your notes? And you want an icon for your unsynced notes. All right, so that is the view settings area.